shoop, shoop, shoopy, shoopy doo. Shut the door, I'm not eating the whole damn neighborhood. Everybody, welcome back to the Old Man Gamer Network. I am Combat Carl. Mercy does not exist. Maybe a little bit. Anyways, we're back here talking about Ebony the King's Return, the Real Beginner's Guide, the I don't know what the difference is between the people shooting feather sticks and the people with the pokey pokes and the pony boys. That's how basic it is. Anyways, we are continuing the basic combat episode because there's just so much stuff to talk about when it comes to combat. So we've done a little bit since uh, we have last been together. Uh, we have upgraded our keep to keep 11 and that does a number of things for us. Um, one of those things that it does is it opens up our access to the subordinate city which is over here. Again, if you swipe with your finger or if you hold the mouse button down as you move around, it will, it will put a label on things for you. And now you can see we have something going on over here at our subordinate city. If we want to access the subordinate city settings, we can go into the three dots, subordinate city, it shows us we have a subordinate city now. It also says that that is one of three subordinate cities. At this stage in the game, we're allowed to have three. You'll also notice I have this glowing blue chest. We're going to look at that in a minute. That may have something to do with this right down here. It is noted as being safe. It is also noted as having a general inside, a name which you might recognize. This is an American subordinate city because my culture is uh, America. So your subordinate city is going to follow whatever your, whatever your culture selected is. If we give that a click, uh, this now brings up our subordinate city menu. It has three tabs, Administration, Buildings, and Troops. This tells us that the walls of the subordinate city are at 100%. Um, oh, we haven't given it a name. We're probably going to call it Scruffy1. You'll see why later as I whack upon the microphone boom stand here. Uh, at the moment, it is uh, it has a power of 30,000. These are the physical coordinates of it, um, which happens to be, well, where our city is located. Those two, you cannot separate them. Um, they will, you, there's, this isn't an entity on the map like some of the other subordinate cities is. It is just connected in your city view as, as we saw out there. Now there are a couple of different settings here that you can use automatically fight for other cities. So if any other subordinate city or your main city gets attacked, this will send troops. I'm taking that off. Except reinforcements. If this subordinate city gets attacked, then everything connected to our network will send reinforcements to it. We're turning that off too because if for some reason we slip up and we let our bubble drop some big mean person can come along and decide to pick on us and if they pick on our subordinate city they can drain everything that we have because we have these set so that they will reinforce other cities now you may want that to happen I don't particularly want that to happen there's also uh, another, this uh, American common subordinate city. You notice there's a little arrow here. If we click on this arrow, here's the name of our city. We can upgrade it from a common city to an uncommon city, which is, would, it would have a green bit of text on it. Um, uh, our keep has to be uh, level 10, meaning this keep has to be level 10. 
I believe it's at level five now because we, we just got it shortly. And it also is going to cost us 5,000 gems. And what is that going to do for us? It's going to speed up the training within that subordinate city. It's also going to speed up the gold production in that subordinate city. And then monetarism, that is our boost that we get is going to go from 10 to 20 percent. So you know what? That might be a worthwhile thing to do later on today it's not that day uh, we have right now we have uh, Cleopatra as our mayor uh, because I want it this is when we unlock this subordinate city um, ability this is when we get uh, Princess Lucy I believe is her name uh, that's when she comes into play and she has a she has a better resource um, uh, boost uh, a better resource skill in her first slot than Cleopatra has so uh, for the meantime I have taken her out or no Princess Betsy maybe that's her I don't know some anyways we got a princess and anyways we swapped her out um, so but if you want to you can click on mayor and you can swap out I'm oh, sorry it is Princess Lucy all right um, you can swap out you know whomever you want to I have decided to go with Cleopatra because um, she's also a historical general and you'll see that gives us a boost here in a minute um, there's a couple of different policies originally as when you get them they will come to balanced uh, you can leave it at that or you can go to a war oriented um, which is going to make troops faster in the subordinate city or you can set it as an economy oriented um, setting and that will make gold faster um, so for right now I don't know we could flip flop between them maybe we'll go here get some troops in there faster material production our subordinate cities are gonna make stuff so these are all of the different materials that this subsidy can make and what you've got to do is this says uh, I believe it is come on click and click thank you um, so this says our material capacity right now is one out of five and that means that it's going to produce up to five items and once it produces five items it's going to stop until you collect them so that is let's back let's I'll show you this we'll back all the way that's what this is this means that your subsidy has produced an item and if you click here it will say hey you just got some stuff now the nice thing about that little alert there is that if you have multiple subordinate cities then you can call then you can click that one little blue chest there and it will collect all of those so let's go back into here because there's a couple other things it's also going to be making gold if we hit the check on that <clears throat> it's going to make 194 gold an hour for us and that's all right because you know money's good uh, and here is our subordinate city buff monetarism current subordinate city gold production speed is 10 percent if we upgrade our subordinate city to a green level then that goes up to 20 percent scientific experiment our research speed is now plus three percent so under our technologies when we go into the academy to research different skills we get a three percent speed boost on there and also because we have a historical general as the mayor uh, our subordinate city training is boosted by two percent if you click on buildings it will show you right now this is the construction speed this is what is currently building uh, it is it is going through the process that we have gone through in building our main uh, city 
you know, it's building a keep, and then when it builds a keep, it builds a wall, and then it starts building resources and training areas and upgrading. And you can see the list. This is what it's working on now. Then it'll start to work on the rally spot. Then it'll start to work on the barracks. And there's the order in which it goes. You can also go to troops. And it, we are making troops. And uh, this first round, it's going to make 4,100 troops. And it looks like right now we've made 135 of them. If you want to, you can instantly train them, but we don't spend gems on stuff like that. So that is one of the things um, that has opened up. <clears throat> Another thing that has opened up is that if you look at, our, at our, the very top here at our resource bar, we've now got a fourth resource. We have ore in our resource spot, and that opened up five resource areas and I just happened to put five ore mines in there and I used the free upgrades and we got them upgraded to three and as soon as we get through upgrading the rest of the inside of our keep we will put those up um, let's see, we've got another couple of buildings. Yeah, we've got the prison here. We, again, built it, free upgraded it as far as it would go. The art hall. I, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not really sure about that one. That one, there are some rewards that you can eventually get through there, but, yeah, I don't know, time will tell how important we think that is. Um, the prison this is comes into play when you are attacking other players uh, you get the opportunity to capture uh, their troops and you can use them for either slave labor or you can release them and get prestige points you can also capture their generals and if you do that then you have the opportunity to hold them for ransom release them or off of their head. You can do that too. Uh, something else that we did is I made the decision to spend some money and I came down here and I played the patrol game to the tune of about a half a million gold. And the reason that I did that is because I needed to get some Monarch gear and we took that Monarch gear and we were able to upgrade what we have on our Monarch to increase our capabilities. So you can see now I have a level 3 wind staff, which for uh, range troop attack, that gives me a 15% boost and then 45 on my troop attack. This was upgraded as well. I've got it set for, for ranged right now. So now I, I have enough, I have enough pieces of Monarch gear that I can, I can change them based on what I'm doing. Um, and then down here, I'm just using the march speed of plus five percent because even though I have a level three Warhorn, and it gives me a march size capacity, it adds six thousand to my march capacity. I am not anywhere near using my march capacity so we're just going to use we're going to use the speed boost for that so that was that was just a decision that that um i, I needed to kind of get that going and so we just spent a little bit of time and, and got that so that's the things that we did and so now what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to do a couple of other things that are going to help us get our keep our combat going and keep it growing in the direction that we want to one of the things we're going to do is we're going to so we're going to spend some talent points i have 11 talent points right now and if you ever want to start a fight get some people together that play this game and start discussing how you spend your talent points it's almost like talking about religion or life insurance 
or something like that. People just get irritated and their hackles get up that you're, you're asking them. And, and, you know, when you give your opinion, they get offended if you don't agree with them. And it doesn't matter which one of these tracks I take. Two thirds of the people watching this are going to be irritated that that's what I do. That's just the way it is. Um, so again, we we briefly discussed that when you select one of these, you are locked in to the next level, either being the one directly below it or one adjacent to it. If you select the middle track, then you have opened all three lanes. Then if you choose the one on the right, you've only opened up these two lanes. You can't go from the extreme left to the extreme right in one turn. You have to do that in two levels. March speed. You know, I got to I got to tell you I think this is where we're going to go because it's painfully slow right now. And here's the other thing. If you get to a point and, and you're just really unhappy with it, you can change this. It's going to cost you 2,000 gems. But by the time you've figured out, you've made a mistake, you've probably got a daily routine set that's doing really well. And 2,000 gems is not going to be, you know, it's not going to break the bank. Um, offering, uh, now, the, I think the one that we're certainly not going to take is free construction because it increases the free speed up time on your building and upgrading by seconds. And that is, every time you tick one of these, it's going to add another 30 seconds on. And I just don't know when we, I mean, when you get into like the mid 20s for keeps and your construction time is measured in double digit days you know, we're talking like 59 days what's the difference between five minutes and eight minutes at that point i i personally i don't i don't see that as a big deal it would it would probably really help us right now but i think the longer term it's this is not the the, the better choice Offering is the one that I really, I really think we should do, and I think we may end up, I think we may end up going back, spending the gems and redoing this and going back this at a later point. Increases the monarch experience and prestige from the offering at our shrine in the middle of our, of our city. You can go to the shrine and you can offer gems and you can offer uh, something called uh, prestige they're like little coins that you can get and they will basically gift you with monarch experience and prestige which will help your rank and your rank helps determine your VIP level and your VIP level has a lot of very beneficial points to it but right now I don't think we're gonna do that I think what we're going to do is we are going to start off by doing our march speed and we're just going to go ahead and spend four points on that. So now that we've done our four points, now you can see we can go to either mortality or we can go to resources production. Resources production sounds great. Boosts in city resources production at the cost of reducing resources gathering. So I can make more resources with my farm space in front of the wall by 20%, but it reduces my gathering speed outside of the walls by 10%. Yeah, I, that just doesn't have a huge appeal to me. And so I think we're going to spend our other four on mortality. Grants you a troop death rate capacity when attacking monsters to protect our troops. So I think that's where we're going to go with our next four points. And then that leaves us with one more, or three more points, actually. 
and I'm kind of torn on this one as well. Uh, the Archer Tower, which is out in front. I don't know that a battle has been won or lost on the power of my Archer Tower. I, mostly because I just, I just don't have enough experience with it. So is our warehouse protection capacity going to be better? Um, you know, it may be. And so I think this is where we're going to go for the next three points. And that locks us in. And so when we get our next, uh, we're going to have to get one more to complete this. And then we can go either, any of these three directions. And we'll talk about that later. So let's get back. We have done this. You know what? Do we have any experience? Yes, we do. Let us go ahead and take this. Okay, we've taken our experience. We're 76% of the way to our next level. Uh, we have already taken care. We'll take a quick look. We've already taken care of our gear. Here is just like the stones. Do you see the dashed arrow? We can go down here. We can go to compose. And we're going to take three level ones. And we're going to turn it into a level two. So there we go. Traps building speed. We've now got a, another one of these. So it's just like the stones. Uh, just like the materials for crafting. And this is the easier way, I think, to manage all of your Monarch gear. Is by this screen. All right, now let's go here. We're going to click on VIP. We have 280 of 300 VIP points. So that means, uh, let's see, do we have? Yes, we have 600 VIP points. So let's just use one of them. And now we have activated VIP one. And what does that mean? Or we have, I'm sorry, we've activated VIP2. When you activate a level, it is active for 24 hours. And then after that point, you have to use your VIP tokens that you can get. Uh, those will be in your inventory. And what does this do? This speeds up our free construction time. This gives us the ability to buy a gold levy with gems an additional 10 times. Our resource production is ramped up by 1%. And our troop death into troop soul rate in the main city is up 3%. That means instead of a troop dying, if there's no space in the hospital, their soul will go into the holy palace and we have a chance to revive it. That's all that that means. Uh, I do, yes, I do remember seeing we had a couple wounded troops. There we go. Because we found out that with the layout that we have, we can do common monsters level 1 through 8 with no wounded. Level 9 with the number of troops that I currently have and the configuration I currently have we take 138 wounded in that battle. We win the battle, but we have a lot of wounded, so we don't want that to happen. So, uh, we've got our VIP going. So you know what? We're going to go out to the battle map. And, I don't know, I'm feeling kind of, I'm feeling kind of ornery. In fact, let's take this. Let's go to our March size capacity. Now, let us change this to all troops attack. Because one of the things that I don't know if you noticed we talked about was 
that we now have the ability to have three subordinate cities and we only have one. Well, if you look right here, there is what's called a white subordinate city. The text on that is white. And if we click on it, and we click detail to get some information on it, we can see that this is a subordinate city of the European culture and that the subordinate city buff, if we absorb this city into our city network, the main city construction speed, uh, we get a 3% boost. That's the main city construction speed not just a subordinate city. This is also going to increase our general experience for monster kills by 2%. And that's just if we get this city into our network. So now if we go to attack, it's going to tell us, here's the power of this, 22.6, here are the number of troops that are in uh, this city. There are one and two level troops. It gives us the extremely high odds, but it gives us a warning. Attacking an NPC subordinate city will cause you to lose troops. And when they say lose troops, they mean they will be killed, as in you will have to build them again. They don't go into the hospital to get healed. When you're battling an NPC, you get troops killed. So if we click the attack button, we can now try to think which one of our generals do we want. Now, something else that we did is I went through and uh, I used some of the general XP and I split it up between the four purple historic generals that we have and I split the, the very first batch of XP up and that brought everybody up to level 7. So they're all level 7s right now. So again, when we go to attack, the Computadora just decides to load us up with whatever uh, our top tiers are until our march capacity is increased. Now notice our march capacity now is 19,600. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to put a few, let's just hit reset here. We're going to throw a few catapults in here. And then we're going to throw some swordsmen in here, some level three swordsmen. And our level two hussars. And let's go with our level two axemen and... Actually, I want more archers than that. Why? I don't really know. It's just a balancing game, perhaps. We're just kind of guessing to see. We want to mix because if we, if you remember looking at, if you looked at the mix of the city, it had a mix of troops. So we are going to send a mix of troops as well. And hopefully, we have 81,000 power that we're going to send in. Is this going to work? I don't have any idea. This is low level. Now we are off to the races like a herd of turtles. Thankfully, we've got four talent points in march speed. Actually, I don't know. No, I think that's March speed in general, so we'll see. I don't know. There's our catapult just a whacking rocks away at it, and everybody's stick poking and beating. Oh, look at that. Congratulations, my lead. You have successfully occupied the subordinate city. So we now have, check that out my subordinate city and it's a level one subordinate city we get the troops come back let's take a look at our report this is a pvp report not just a regular 
uh, monster killing report. So here we are. We have 348k worth of power and we lost, let's see, we sent 19,600 troops over. We had 1,171 troops that were killed. But if you go over here, they had 10,698 troops and they were all killed. So I think we came out the better end on that. And you can see they didn't have a general. We had a general. Our general survived. Then you can also look down here and you can see these are the boosts that we have. And this is because of the gear that we have, because of the, the training that we have. That's what all, where all of these come into play. And you'll notice over here, they had nothing. They had nothing at all. So we won. We won that battle. That's all right. So we're going to quickly go over here and we're going to heal or start the healing process for our troops. Yes, yes, Merry Christmas. Oh no, it's a PvP battle. Our troops died. They didn't get wounded, they died. So let's go back, and because I'm greedy, and I know the intense combat action has got you on the edge of your seat, guess what's over here? There's another one. This one, let's go for some detail. This is a Chinese common subordinate city. What are its buffs? Main city resource production speed is increased by 4%. So whatever I'm producing out in front of the wall, I get a 4% boost on that. And there's also a 2% boost in my training speed. Well, that might be all right. Yeah, let's do that. We'll hit the attack again. We're still at extremely high. They are still at level one and level two very similar mix to what there was. You'll notice their numbers here. What's their highest number? And their highest number is uh, C, their lowest siege engines. Almost, yeah. Well, let's do it again. Let's see if we've still got enough oomph. Let's see if we've still got enough gas in the tank to uh, whack them out. So I remember we took all of these guys and I remember we took a few of these and we took a bunch of these and then here in the middle we just kind of went like that yeah let's, yeah let's do that does that look good? Oh, I still got a little bit let's uh... let's go here a little bit more alright let's see if we can do that again There we go. We now have our third subordinate city. We lost the same amount. Again, we lost 1139 uh, troops and or siege engines. They lost a whole lot of guys, all of their guys, and so now if we go back to our subordinate city menu, we now have a red dot. And that red dot is telling me you don't have a mayor appointed. And that's important because if you have selected automatic 
reinforcements and fighting for other cities. That can't happen unless you have a mayor in that city. So let's fall and now we have use for some of these other people just as placeholders right now. Let's put Natasha in and we are not going to get that training speed bonus because she is not a historical general. And then we're going to go here to the China subsidy. We're going to click and we're going to put Natasha the other. See, I have Natasha and I have Natasha the other. And so now we have got mayors in our cities. Uh, I believe that one is Scruffy 3. Which would then make this other one Scruffy 2. It'll all be clear in the future, my young pad one. So, what does that mean? We filled up our three subordinate city slots. We now have three cities that are going to start generating their own troops, their own buildings, and they are also going to start generating gold and sending it to the main city. And they are also going to bring with them their cultural buffs and help us to get some stuff done. So that is, I think, where we're going to leave it. We have caught up on all the things that we did in the last episode. A lot of that had to do with gaining keep 11. Um, we have distributed our talents. Uh, we have um, uh, not only organized our subordinate city, but we have obtained two more subordinate cities. We have activated our VIP status. We have spread out some of our general experience. I think we're going to go through and we're going to do that some more. We may do a little bit of gear refinement. I, I've done some, but not very much, just because I don't want to sink a lot of cash into um, some, some very basic uh, items. Um, we're, we don't have the cash flow going right now. And, you know, once we get a little further along, because today was just the seventh day. And there's probably two days of that where there wasn't anything going on on, on our part. Um, you know, we have a saying in the, in the alliances that I'm in, real life comes first. And sometimes that means you don't get to come down and do the stuff that you want to do. We do come down and log in every day to try to catch our puzzle pieces to make sure that we get our bonuses um, but there are times where you just can't can't spend the time and that's all right so anyways that's where we're gonna leave that we're gonna continue um, fighting and clearing out uh, these common enemies uh, these common monsters around our area uh, getting our experience uh, gains up getting uh, item drops for the most part. That's the, the biggest thing that we're doing is getting item drops. Uh, while we are alternating collecting Santa Claus and doing uh, material, uh, you know, resource runs, um, at night we will search out um, gem mines and because gem mines take longer so we will do our gem mining overnight so that when we come in in the morning we'll have a little extra boost uh, to get that done. I think in the next episode we are we're probably going to start talking alliances and what they can do for you and how you can contribute in a meaningful way um, that'll be a that'll be a long multi episode, I think conversation because uh, alliances, you know that's 
that's where the rubber meets the road on this game that's where stuff gets done and that's where these little kind of piddly gains that we're making now um, you're going to start to really see some stuff happen um, and I've got a, I've got I'm talking to a couple of people I've I've got I've got us maybe going into I don't know there's two or three smaller alliances um, we're probably even going to show you how to make your own and then I'm going to do a I'm going to do a guest almost like a taster as we would call it when we lived in England which is we're going to try something out I'm going to do a visit to a a fairly well established well oiled machine of a alliance and let you let you see what um, you know what can what can really happen when things when everything's firing on all cylinders so anyways uh, this is the old man gamer network doing the basic basic series of ebony the king's return and i am combat carl and you guys have a good one cheers hey thanks for hanging out with us today be sure to tap that thumbs up button if you think we've earned it and be sure to hit the subscribe button and that little bell to be notified when new content comes out. Be sure to check out these other videos. And I'm Combat Carl for Old Man Gamer Network. You guys be sure to go straight home. No screwing around.